Hello and welcome. This is the second episode of our mini course on impact of climate change on Indian economy. In this video, we are going to discuss the scientific basics. I hope you have already watched the first video where we established the importance of this topic and how we are going to go about in this mini course. So let us start what we are going to learn in this particular episode in this particular video. So in scientific basics, we are first going to understand what is the phenomenon of global warming, how global warming is caused. In this process, we are going to learn about the greenhouse gases and the greenhouse effect. After we are done with that, we will take a look into climate change. We will understand what is climate and what is climate change and what is the relation between climate change and global warming. Before we start, let me ask you a question. Are you one of those people who treat climate change, global warming and greenhouse effect as one and the same? If that is so, after this video, you are not going to do so. They are interrelated phenomena, but very definitely, they do not mean the same thing. We will understand in this video. Let us start first with what is global warming. So whenever we talk about warming, there is a sense that something is heating up. From its base state, it is getting warmer. In this case, we are talking about the heating up of the earth as a system. Specifically, the atmosphere, the water bodies on the planet earth and the lithospheric formations, all of them are heating up. Their mean temperature has steadily been rising. There has been phases in the earth's history which were comparatively cooler. There have been phases which we can look back and call them as a warm period. But what has happened that after the industrial revolution, the mean temperature of the water bodies, the atmosphere and the lithospheric formations has been increasing. And this increase has been very, very dramatic in the last 100 years and within the last 100 years, the period after the Second World War. So when we try to define global warming, we will call global warming as a steady rise in the mean temperature of the earth that means its atmosphere water bodies and the lithosphere when we look at the definition part given by different bodies so here you have got nasa's definition which says unusually rapid increase in the earth's surface temperature yes this is very much a valid definition the one that i gave you is a little more academic which you can use in your examination and as I was telling you, the surface temperature has been increasing for a long time. And by long time, we would take the baseline year as 1750. 1750 is when the scientists look back and say that from this year onwards, the Earth's temperature has been increasing rather rapidly because of various human activities. And since then, it has only been an upward trend. The rate of increase has significantly accelerated in the last 100 years or so because the pace of industrialization, the extent of industrialization and how much we depended on fossil fuel combustion for this industrialization and also transportation that has increased much, much faster in the 20th century. So that is global warming. Now let us come to what causes global warming. So global warming is caused by an underlying phenomenon that is called the greenhouse effect or the greenhouse gas effect. So basically the greenhouse effect is a heat entrapment mechanism, heat entrapment that will mean some amount of heat will be trapped. Okay. So it is a heat entrapment mechanism that operates in the lower part of the atmosphere. What happens? that whenever the sun is shining on any part of the earth, that part of the earth will be getting warmer. The heating effect of various wavelengths of light coming from the sun is a well-known day-to-day observation. So, of course, the earth will be heated up. Now, the heat energy that has been captured by the earth will eventually be dissipated in the form of the infrared radiation and in the form of other longer wavelength because the longer wavelengths have got a certain heating effect. So the heat dissipation is most effectively done in the form of these invisible longer wavelengths 
which includes infrared radiations. So when the earth is trying to lose the absorbed heat, some part of it will be retained. Most of it will be lost, thankfully, but some part of it will be retained within the lower parts of the atmosphere. What causes this retention? There is an invisible blanket of certain gases in the lower part of the atmosphere, some of which some gases will re-radiate the infrared uh, radiation and some of which will be reflecting the infrared radiation. Long story short, good amount of infrared and other long wavelength will be able to escape, but some part of it is retained within the lower reaches of the atmosphere. And earlier I told you that these radiations have got a certain heating effect. Since they have got a certain heating effect, they will be causing warming of the lower part of the atmosphere. This will be happening every day. Over a period of time, the mean temperature will be rising. This is also known as radiative forcing. So radiative forcing is a term that has been used even by IPCC. It's not that the IPCC coined this term. The term has already been there among the climatologists, which basically says that the amount of radiation energy that comes to the earth, all of this energy is not returned by the earth. Some part of this energy is trapped within the closer parts of the earth's surface. And this entrapped radiation energy is causing heating. In this diagram, if you see, so when the sun is shining, the solar radiation made up of long and short wave, they will be striking the surface of the earth, they will be causing warming. The warm surface of the earth will try to lose this heat. Good part of it is actually lost, but some part of it is retained because of these gases in the atmosphere. What are these gases? We are going to come to that point as well. Now that is causing warming. Now we come to see the proper definition of what is greenhouse effect. So a process by which the thermal radiation from a planetary surface, in this case the pl planetary surface is our earth, is absorbed by atmospheric greenhouse gases and is re-radiated in all the directions. So that is greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect gets its name from greenhouse that we use to grow plants under controlled condition. And the most controlled condition that we are looking for these plants is the temperature. Temperature part of the condition we try to control through the, these greenhouses. So what we do in these greenhouses? What we do in these greenhouses? We try to grow such ornamental plants, such other vegetables, herbs and all that which requires slightly warm temperature. The problem is that we are trying to grow them in the colder parts of the world. So these greenhouses, <coughs> they have got transparent roof and transparent wall made up of different types of sheets, uh, synthetic sheets or glass. Now that will allow a lot of light to come in and when light comes in, it will cause warming. This warming will be warming up the air, water vapor and that will create a warm temperature inside of this greenhouse which will be good for these plants to grow. Okay, But the greenhouse is structured in such a way that while it allows some amount of gaseous exchange, it will not allow the total escape of warm air. So even at night, these greenhouses are significantly warm to the in comparison to the outside temperature the outside temperature can very well be sub-zero in so many parts of the world, especially during the night. Yet the greenhouse chamber is maintaining a good temperature that will prevent injury to these plants. Also, the glass or the sheets, vinyl sheets, which are used to construct the wall and the roof of the greenhouses, they will be blocking a good amount of infrared radiation from escaping. So you can pause the video and you can see this infographic. So that way, here you see that some of the infrared radiation is forced back to stay within the greenhouse. 
an infrared radiation will be having heating effect so it will be keeping the greenhouse further warm so lack of hot air escape not hot air warm air escape and also the radiative forcing of infrared keeps the greenhouse warm and a very similar effect we see on our planet hence we call it the greenhouse effect now the question is is the greenhouse effect entirely man made in this graphic i am going to show you that greenhouse effect is not entirely man made even if there is no such human activity that deposits the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere there will be some greenhouse effect the reason is there are so many natural processes which will release at least three very important greenhouse gases they happen to be carbon dioxide methane and nitrous oxide so there will be some amount of these gases in the atmosphere and these gases will be giving rise to a certain amount of greenhouse effect but this greenhouse effect is considered to be the good greenhouse effect because it keeps the earth sufficiently warm to allow different life forms if we remove this greenhouse effect totally by uh, imagining that all the greenhouse gases from the atmosphere have been totally removed the earth will be too cold to support life form so this is the good greenhouse effect the problematic greenhouse effect is called the enhanced or accelerated greenhouse effect in which the amount of greenhouse gases the density of the greenhouse gases is significantly increased because of human activities mainly the burning of fossil fuel cutting off the forest and other activities like cattle rearing certain type of farming which releases methane all these activities combined have increased the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that has intensified the greenhouse effect that has accelerated the rise in temperature in the right side of the panel you see human enhanced greenhouse effect where the greenhouse blanket is shown as quite thicker compared to this greenhouse blanket which is quite thinner let us now see what are the greenhouse gases which are responsible for this phenomenon there are so many gases which act as greenhouse gas to qualify as a greenhouse gas you either need to absorb the infrared and other long wavelength and re-radiate some of that back towards the earth or you should be able to simply reflect one of these long radiations towards the earth now there are some of these gases whose contribution is much more and whose level of emission we can control there are some where the contribution is either less or whose emission level we cannot control so that ways we can classify so those whose impact is significant and whose emission we can control have been brought under some targeted reduction regime of kyoto protocol even under the paris accord we are trying to cut down mainly these greenhouse gases so what are these greenhouse gases carbon dioxide methane and nitrous oxide these three gases are coming into the atmosphere from both natural processes as well as man made sources like automobile power plant plants and all that and then these fluorinated gases hydrofluorocarbons perfluorocarbons sulfur hexafluoride they all are entirely the gases which are of industrial origin all right so these six gases they came under a regime of targeted reduction under the kyoto protocol now in the paris accord we are not targeting specific gases but whenever the countries they talk about their mitigation plan they are mainly talking about mitigating the emission of mainly these gases but outside of these six gases there are other greenhouse gases also one of the most important happens to be water vapor of course its contribution is significant but its level in the atmosphere we cannot control molecular h2 contributes ozone that is near the earth surface that also contributes hydrochlorofluorocarbons which were brought as the alternative to uh, chlorofluorohydrocarbons 
as compressor gases in refrigerator, air conditioner, so on. So they were brought as alternative to hydro, uh, chlorofluorohydrocarbons, but they turned out to be potent greenhouse gases. For that matter, even HFC is an alternate to those gases under the Montreal Protocol, but it is also a potent greenhouse gas. And now there is an international effort to phase out hydrofluorocarbons as well. Moving next, we talk about the contribution of different greenhouse gases. And you will see that carbon dioxide takes the lion's share. Carbon dioxide taken together from fossil fuel use, from deforestation, decay of biomass, etc. and other sources together account for 77% they together account for 77% of total greenhouse effect. Then methane is the second largest contributor at 14%. Nitrous oxide is the next. F gases at present has a very, very small contribution. But since individual F gases are very potent greenhouse uh, gases, like their warming potential can be up to 1000 times or even greater than carbon dioxide. So if we cut down the emission of F gases right from the beginning, it will be much better for the cause of climate change control. So this is the relative contribution. Now let us see where do we stand vis-a-vis -vis the carbon dioxide uh, presence in the atmosphere. So today the carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere has exceeded 400 part per million. And this rise from 330 part per million to 400 part per million has happened in the last 150 years. It is so alarming. And this is still showing an upward trend. So we now know uh, that human activities have caused almost 1 degree centigrade of global warming. The range is somewhere between 0 0.8 degree centigrade to 1.2 degree centigrade compared to the pre-industrial level, the baseline year being 1750. But much of this increase has come about in the last 100 years. So the scientists talk about keeping the extent of warming within 2 degrees centigrade compared to the pre-industrial level. And now there is a renewed call to keep it within 1.5 degrees centigrade compared to the pre-industrial level to avoid or prevent the catastrophic effect of global warming. But it remains to be seen if we are going to achieve that 1.5 degree centigrade target or not because we are very very close to that 1.5 degree centigrade and it seems very hard if we will be able to reach there. What are the sources which contribute to the greenhouse effect? Energy supply is the biggest culprit that is at 26%. Then industries they are also contributing 19% agriculture and transport. So these are the biggest five energy supply, industry, forestry, agriculture and transport. Uh, these are those human activities which contribute to the greenhouse effect and that ways they are contributing to global warming. When it comes to emission, India stands at number three but much less than number one and number two. At number one, there is China. China has comparable population to India, but look at the emission of China with respect to India. This is the emission of India. This is the emission of China. Such is a gap. The second emission, biggest emitter after China is United States of America and USA, which much a smaller population than India, is almost 2.5 times to 3 times bigger em emitter compared to India. But if you consider European Union as a block, then the position of India is fourth, China, USA, then European Union and then comes India. So considering EU as a block, India will be coming fourth. Considering individual nations separately, India will be coming third. Now we come to what is climate and what is climate change. So climate is long term average of weather variables. This is the definition given by the World Meteorological Organization 
which says that the average of weather variables over a period of 30 years or more is climate. And when the variables of climate change in a certain direction over a long horizon of time, we will be calling it climate change. There are three main variables of climate. First is temperature. Because of global warming, temperature is anyway rising. Second is wind pattern. When the temperature changes, there will be realignment of the pressure belts and as a result, there will be change in wind pattern. And if the wind pattern changes, there will be change in moisture distribution. And if there is a change in moisture distribution, there is going to be a change in rainfall. So all the three variables of weather are going to be impacted by global warming in a long term manner and that way climate change is happening. And the climate change shows today as very high frequency and intensity of extreme weather phenomena. Either it could be extreme heat wave, extreme snowing, uh, increased intensity and frequency of various cyclones, hurricanes, so on. Then we look at the rising sea level, look at the melting ice caps on the poles, melting glaciers, so on. So they all are vivid examples of what climate change is doing to planet Earth. So how do we technically define climate change? And you will find it very interesting that two UN related definitions, two definitions which come from, uh, one is coming from a UN mandated body that is IPCC and the second one is coming from a UN uh, treaty that is United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. They both look at climate change a little differently. How do they look at uh, it differently? When you talk about IPCC, IPCC looks at climatic change as change either brought by natural processes or by human activities. So who brought the changes is immaterial. But if the long term weather variables are changing, there is climate change according to IPCC. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change focuses on human induced climate change. So it refers to a change of climate that is attributed directly or indirectly to human activity that alters the composition of global atmosphere. All right. So these are two ways to look at the climate change definition. So climate change is happening. In the next video, we will be looking at the impact of climate change. But before we talk about what are we going to cover in the next video, time to recap all that we have learned in this video. First, what is global warming? Rapid primarily anthropogenic increase in average global temperature. The earth warms because of the greenhouse effect which taps some of the sun's radiation. It is intensifying because of increasing carbon concentration in the atmosphere. Intensifying global warming is leading to changes in global climate and it is a major threat to earth's ecosystems. So this is what we learned. Now, in the next video, we are going to see the major consequences of global warming. First, on the global scale and further next video, we will be focusing on the climate change impact on India. And after that, we will be getting into the domain of impact on different sectors of Indian economy. So, well, that is all in this video. I hope you liked it. You understood all the explanation. And I look forward to seeing you in the next videos of this series. Goodbye.